So my name is Jonathan, I'm a mentor and a teacher and I'm also someone that suffers with, uh, with uh, mental health of OCD. I'd like to share something today that I've learned about low mood. Now, I've struggled with, um, with low moods all my life, on and off, you know, very up and down, uh, especially in my 20s and in my early 30s. I, I've, I've got a lot better now at 40, but it's still a challenge, right? Now, here's one thing that I learned that I want to share with you today, which, which has been, it's still an ongoing um, discovery that I found, which, is, which has been so helpful. Now, with the, with the low mood, what, what everyone does is what I've done when I first used to experience them, is I, I put myself down and I judged myself and, and got more down, and I, I frantically tried to fix it and change it. I tried to, you know, like we all do, what can I do to get myself in a good mood? Maybe I can eat some cakes or some food or... I've got to get around people or I've got to make myself happy or I've got to put on some music or you know, I've, I've, got, I've got to pray extra harder. You know, I was constantly trying to, to fix what I perceive to be the problem, which is you know, being in a low mood, not necessarily being negative, it can be sometimes, or not necessarily being like you know, depressed or unhappy, although it can sometimes be that, just, just feeling in a low mood, like just feeling in a low mood and years and years of doing that I used to feel like well that that works but when I look at it in the long run it never worked it, it was only a quick fix and it would only put me back in the cycle again because telling yourself that there's something wrong with me I shouldn't be feeling like this I need to change this something bad's gonna happen everybody else is normal I'm not normal that conversation there was creating all the problems now later on I think going through a dip, different experiences in my life and I'm not being big headed when I say this I want to help more people right so when I became successful and I built a successful business and, and I got a girlfriend a relationship and I started to earn money and, and help people and do public speaking which I absolutely love it put me on such a high for probably about two to three years it was quite like a honeymoon period I was so happy so grateful but everything come crashing down um, and I went through you know a mental health breakdown sometime after and what I've discovered from all the things I'm saying I still didn't fix the origin of the problem and the origin of the problem all along was I didn't accept myself when I had low moods and I didn't accept I, I told myself that a low mood is like a disease it's it's something that and obviously society teaches that you know I got taught that growing up a lot of the influences it's the fear of being judged by others and constantly feeling that something's wrong I've got to change it whereas what I've discovered recently now obviously if we had a choice but we I prefer to feel not in a low mood more energetic that's kind of my natural state and happy but what I've learned now is is every time I accept the low mood I actually immediately become grateful and it's actually even better than than looking for happiness it's, it's even stronger and I, I put it in the box of discipline and gratitude and that's where daily discipline comes in, um, which is what I'm, I'm teaching people now um, that I wasn't teaching years ago when my teaching was different and I'm practicing it myself every day. I'm doing it right now in this video. So if you're in a low mood, you can actually develop the discipline to just accept it and still go about your life the same way that you would, still in, enjoy your work, still go to the gym, still meet family or enjoy a coffee on your own. It's almost like reverse psychology. When you do that, you immediately actually, without trying and forcing and fixing, your mood goes up because you're not telling yourself that you shouldn't be like that. And, and that is just such a cruel, unfair way to live. You know, We wouldn't do that with someone that we love, but yet we do it to ourselves. So it's a habit that you've got to change. And it comes down to acceptance. It comes down to breaking down um, a perspective, a belief that we've most of us have been taught in society growing up, pressure at school, even before social media came about in my generation, there was always a pressure that you had to be happy, you had to be laughing and joking. And that's that's actually not natural, that's not reality, that's not normal. And so this isn't a problem. This is part of being human. We don't always feel in a, in a high energy mood. Even even extroverts don't. It's just that it's the natural way our body works nothing stays always the same same as the weather it's not always hot unless you're in a hot country in london it rains it's hot things change so when you can be more um stronger and more aware and more disciplined it doesn't affect you no more
and you can actually even find more peace. I'd say peace is the right word. You can get more peace, more love for yourself and other people, more acceptance. When you're in a low mood, if you accept the low mood and you really accept it, that's opposed to when you're in sort of like, you know, when, because I get, we all get those, when you're really happy and, and you're kind of on a high, but then it crashes down. I find it's even more better, more mature. Um, but again, look, this is my perspective. This is what I found to work for me. And, and this is also the perspective of a lot of people, especially through me doing therapy. This is what I learned from others. And over the long haul, it really does lead to somewhere even better. So what I'm talking today, obviously, is about mental health, is about self-esteem, is about um, accepting yourself more and accepting your moods and not, not, not checking in on your mood as a way of deciding how is the day going to go, if that makes sense. Because back in the day when I was younger, I would check my mood frantically. It was obsessive, probably part of, part of OCD, but just being human. And I'd go, how do I feel today? I'm not feeling good today. I'm feeling down, I'm feeling uh, ashamed, I'm not feeling social, I'm not going to go and meet my, my, I'm not going to go and see my family and friends, I'm not going to run my business, or I'm not going to go to the gym. I basically closed my whole life down just based on a mood. And when I look back now, what a shame, that wasn't, that was unnecessary. It was a, it was a real, you know, it was a knee-jerk reaction, but if I knew what I knew now back then, I would have went about my life differently. I would have went about my daily um, tasks differently so now that I know this now I'd like to share it with more people and maybe save you a lot of time and another thing that I was doing some of you might relate to this I was only really really liking myself when I was in a good mood when I felt happy and confident I liked myself you know um, but if I felt down and when I look at my life a lot of my life a lot of it was low moods when I look at it I don't know the exact figure so for, the most, for most of my life growing up, most of the time I wasn't liking myself. I was only liking myself when my mood was really good and that is so, it's not truthful, it's not accurate. But that was because I was operating from the beliefs that I was uh, taught to believe growing up through things that you, you pick up and you take on, mostly peer pressure in society, that if I'm not in a good mood, then I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough, I'm not deserving, I don't deserve to be loved don't deserve to love so of course it's completely irrational it's completely untrue but I had to really um, go through a lot of life experiences and and really get to a, a point where I had to make a decision do I want to continue living like this and having this relationship with myself and I decided I don't want this anymore and I certainly don't want this in my in my 40s or, or 50s or any age but this isn't about age or make a point of it this is about um, people and helping people and letting other people decide again if it works for them because we're all different and although I always feel like there's always truths and principles that work for everyone but not every therapy or not for my teachings they may not be right for you or everyone but for the people that it works that that's great that's how I go about learning from teachers as well so I thought I'd speak on that um, and it's for me it goes a, a little bit further it's also learning how to be grateful in tough times because we all go through tough times and learning how to be grateful in good times. So again, it's back to discipline. And that's, I'm still learning about discipline as I'm teaching it to others and practicing it myself. Discipline is not based on your mood. It's not based on, oh, today I feel confident and I'm feeling really you know, grateful. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna be around people and be kind and, and all those things, which is great. But today I'll wake up and I'm not feeling good, so I'm not gonna be around people. I'm not gonna be as friendly. I'm not gonna be friendly to myself. I'm, I'm not gonna leave the house. I found that to be really, really cruel and unfair on anybody, especially when we treat ourselves like that. So discipline is about saying, well, I'm just not gonna go by my emotions today. They're not pleasant. I'm not gonna go by my thoughts. I'm gonna go by how I, want, how I really wanna live my life and the things that I've gotta do. And of course, the discipline sometimes, you have to be unselfish, you know? It's like saying, if, I, if you make a promise that you're gonna help a friend today, tomorrow, you're gonna to help a friend move, or you know, you're gonna borrow a friend some money, they're in need, or you're gonna go, um, go out with them, or you know, you're gonna do something, you make a promise to someone when you're in a good mood. If you wake up and you're, and you're in a, not in a good mood, you don't generally, you don't let the person down. You know, you try not to break your promise because you've given a vow, that's discipline. 
Now, you may not feel like it, but you said you were going to do it. You made a commitment. They're relying on you. So you go and do it. You do it, you know. Of course, unless something major disaster happened. But generally, other than that. So I really learned about how mood connects to discipline, how mood ex connects to self-acceptance, and how mood connects to breaking down beliefs that are not helpful. Now, I'm not saying every single belief in society is negative because it's not that would be taking things to the extreme there's some things out there that that are, that are great they're, they're they're honorable you know they're, they're they're decent but they're obviously beliefs that are not good so i'm not like blaming society as a whole i said well you know we're all kind of to a certain degree responsible but we can choose and say no i'm, I'm not going to believe that that i tried that it didn't work for me and it's also taking the pressure off because if, if you're putting pressure on yourself that you've got to be in a good mood all the time, it's going to put you in a bad mood. That's going to create unnecessary amounts of stress and anxiety. You're not accepting, you know, life. You're not accepting um, human nature, being that our moods can change from minute to minute. So it's really not um, throwing the towel in. It's really not giving up because you don't always feel like it. And things can change, you know, all the time even making this video you can wake up and you think oh, i'm not in the mood today but then you you go out you be brave and you know you exercise your courage you go to the gym and when you work out you you feel great because you you didn't you know you didn't um you didn't basically avoid and procrastinate because you didn't quite feel like it and over over long time sorry over the yeah over time over the long term your mood actually starts to get more consistently stable so you're not too up crashing down and you're not too low and personally for me again everyone's different i didn't i didn't feel this way when i was younger i prefer to be in the middle where i'm not aesthetically too high because i know i'm going to come down and get really down and i don't like obviously being massively down i like to be in the middle um more so where i am now i'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit underneath that today but i'm totally fine with it and I found when I'm doing mentoring session with clients, they have found such relief, such strength, when I've said to them, look, you don't have to be perfect, because none of us are. You haven't got to try and impress me today, or you just do, you're doing the best you can. And the relief that I see with clients, same for all of us, same, same for me, and they end up feeling even more grateful. So peace, gratitude, and discipline, all these things, I mean, this is my way of describing it. These things can be quite separate from massive doses of, of uh, dopamine or the highs that we get, the quick fixes and happiness, which never last long anyway. You're up and down. These are a lot more long lasting. And you can get into, you can get into this frame of mind or this state of, you know, living through the things that we've spoken about today. But listen, I'm going to be honest with you. It's not easy, this. I've been practicing this now for for quite a long time but that's i don't want that to deter you no you know go at your own pace but you will you will notice the difference so yeah this has been um a lot of people ask me over the years throughout my journey how did i get through tough times how do i still get through tough days how do i how did i create good times in my life and, and a lot of it especially i would say the sort of second chapter of my life which i call from age 34 to i'm 40 now has been through the practices that I'm talking about today and it's basically discipline. It does take discipline to wake up and say, well, my mood's low, but I'm still gonna be social. Like I went and got my, I just went and got my beard trimmed today. I'm really grateful for it. I wasn't particularly in the mood for a conversation, but I've practiced the discipline. I had a great conversation with the barber. It was, a, it was absolute gentleman. I gave him a tip. We had a chat, he made me laugh, but I didn't try to, be funny i didn't i didn't change my facial expressions now which is what i used to do a lot a lot of people do and it feels a lot lighter it, it, it is a really it's hard to explain it's very simple but it almost feels like you've, you've been you know you've broken out of a prison because i felt like that for so many years and i know that so many people millions of people all around the world all all different ages will really understand what I'm saying. You, Even you watching this now, you, you'd be like, oh my goodness, every single word, I've, I've been going through it. Of course, some people that um, 
that don't understand that that's totally fine right i think especially people uh, like me my clients and my community who have suffered with, uh, with either ocd or agoraphobia or social anxiety or an anxiety disorder in general depression they will really relate to what i'm saying so it's um i'm gonna speak a lot more on this because as i said i'm i'm still learning it i haven't i haven't mastered it but i've made a lot of progress on my own journey and I don't always have to do this, but sometimes I'll do a client session with a client and they might be doing well externally, like in their business and their diet and their, in their friendships, relationships, but their mental health, their mood might be off because they're punishing themselves because they're not always where they expect that they should be in, in regards to their mood. And I'll explain this to them and I'll say, look, take your time, practice it. And you, you know, it's also a description of gratitude this this is also an example of, of genuine gratitude not fake gratitude not forced gratitude but just genuine gratitude as i said it's, it takes some time because if you've been living like this like i was for like 30 years even longer it's it's going to feel a little bit um it's going to feel a little bit strange and a bit um a bit unnatural to begin with because you've been in a habit for so long of of um really putting pressure on yourself and telling yourself that this is wrong it's not wrong we 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 tell ourselves these things are wrong we, you know it's human and maybe yes yeah, some of us have more predisposed to high and low moods but i'm always a believer through my experience regardless of what science says you can always improve things and change things you can change the brain you can change your mood you can improve your mental health through discipline discipline works wonders and and you know, good relationships, getting help, therapy, mentorship, exercising, diet, just sitting down, just being a bit more mindful, and even just saying, look, today I'm not feeling great, but I'm gonna accept it. I'm not gonna try and change it. Trying to frantically change your mood will make the mood worse. Generally doesn't work for people. Everyone, including me, all of us, respectfully, we end up going into our addictions, whether it's, um, whatever our addiction is, alcohol, um, can be drugs it can for me it's always been like sugary foods chocolates cakes escapism and then we end up back to square one again so um yeah this is um really does help and as i said some of the some of the discoveries that i found with this was not just being mindful and aware when i wake up in the morning if i'm sitting at a restaurant or if i'm with a friend or on my own a lot of these discoveries that i personally found for me was when i was in the middle of exercising because i'd wake up and think I lo personally for me I love exercise anyway right I've always enjoyed it it's always felt like a, it's, it's, it's always felt like a gift for me like I can't believe I've got I can do this I feel I'm scared it's going to be taken away from me so when I've been exercising it's, it's kind of come to me I'm like oh my goodness I'm enjoying this now and I'm not in I'm not in a good mood I, I feel a bit down but I'm still I'm, I'm getting a lot of peace a lot of connection you know I'm, I'm, I'm appreciating this now I don't want to stop so I took a lot of um, the acceptance and the, and the self-esteem development and, and the whole not trying to change my mood through a lot of the discoveries when I was on the bag doing the boxing, when I was running, doing weights, swimming, you know, it really did come to me. And, and I remember growing up, people used to say, I'd often hear some really good therapists or teachers or family members or you know people that i followed the faith saying this but i didn't understand it i used to hear it intellectually and just think how oh, well, that makes sense but it's not going to work for me because i i can't accept myself there's emotions that are blocking me there's my, my thoughts my beliefs are not allowing me to to um accept myself when i'm in a low mood i can accept myself when i'm in a good mood because i feel deserving but i can't do that in a low mood i didn't realize that i could I was keeping myself there through what I was telling myself and not challenging and trying to frantically fix my mood. And every time I tried to fix my mood, I was just reinforcing that I don't accept myself until I feel, you know, happy and outgoing and things have to always go well on the outside. And that's also, that's false. That's not true. So that was a mentoring session today. Um, I hope you appreciate it. I shared a lot of my personal journey so I could help a lot of you. This is not all the ways, but one of the ways that I teach. And, you know, you discover this for yourself. So I hope this works for you. It's, it's, it's helping a lot of my clients at the moment. It's certainly helping me. And I'm, I'm really confident that it can, it can help you, all right? So I'll speak to all of you soon. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to maybe put this video on Instagram as well. 
If you got, I'd love to know your feelings in the box below. I'm going to do maybe more events on this and more teachings to share more and see where we go of it. All right, have a good day.